Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Sharon and this is a channel that is dedicated to all things related to narcissism. I've been married to a covert narcissist for almost 20 years. I'm separated from him now. And what I do with this channel is I use my real life experiences to get information out there to people about what narcissism really is, what it looks like, what it does to you and what it does to your family. In today's video, I'm going to talk about 10 things that narcissists say and what they really mean. So I'll start off with the I love you. When a narcissist tells you that they love you, they're not saying it in the way that you would tell somebody that you love them. They don't feel love. It's not possible for them. So when a narcissist tells you that they love you, what they really are saying is, I love what you do for me. I love how you look. I love how you give me money. I love how you give me prestige. I love what it does to me for other people to see that I'm married and have children. I love being able to put pictures of my kids up in my office and have people tell me good things about me being a father or a mother. That's what they mean by it. Another thing, and this is my favorite, is I'm going to change. So a narcissist is never going to change. So when they tell you they're going to change, what they're really saying is, I'm future faking you. I'm telling you what you want me to say so I can get something that I want now. You want me to change so I don't have any problem lying to you and telling you that I'm going to change so I can get exactly what I want now. You're never going to see me change. I won't change. But what I can do and what I will do is take advantage of you for as long as you will allow it. Another thing is when they tell you that isn't what happened. Well, the reality is that is exactly what happened. But I don't want you to believe it. So I'm going to pretend that it didn't happen. After all, it isn't a lie if I believe it's true. The truth is that I'm a psychopath and I don't have any problem lying to you. Another one is when they tell you that they're the best at something. They're the best at work. They're the best at sports. They're the best at everything. It's not true, but they're not going to tell you the truth, which is, I'm not the best. I'm not even close to the best. In fact, I am a complete failure at all things in life, but I don't want to admit that to myself and I don't want you to know that. So I'm just going to brag to you and tell you how I'm the best at everything. Because if I say it, it must be true. Or at least that's how you should think of it. Another one is it's not my fault. Of course, the truth is what they're not going to tell you. The truth is of course it's my fault. I'm an idiot, a liar, a cheat, a complete failure. But admitting the truth is not something I will ever do. So I will blame someone else, maybe you, so I can pretend I'm a victim. And that leads us into the sixth one, which is I've had a hard life, which really means I like being a victim. So I believe I've had a hard life. Now, it's possible that the narcissist has had a hard life because a lot of people believe that, and I can certainly see this can be true, that a narcissist had some problem at the beginning of their life or at some point in their life where they did not form an attachment to a caregiver. So because of that, they lack that ability to connect with somebody else. And in some cases, I know in my husband's case, for example, he grew up in a family where his father is a narcissist and he grew up hearing things such as, you know, he's never going to be as good as his father. He's going to be a failure. And of course, those things did turn out to be true. You know, I really believe that the way that a child is treated absolutely translates into how they live as an adult. And, you, you know, whether you believe this for a relig uh, in a religious reason or not, I, I do personally believe that people can curse other people. And when you tell a child all the time that they're a failure, they're never going to be as good, at, you know, as you are or, or who, what have you, that can really make it so that the child becomes that exact failure. It prevents the child from having a successful life. And I do believe that that happened with my husband, and I can see that happening with a lot of people, but it doesn't make it okay for them to go ahead and abuse other people. 
people that have been abused, you know, because the truth is that a lot of times it is codependents, empaths, people that have big hearts that end up in these relationships with narcissists and they get hurt and abused. These same people, codependents, empaths, they know what it's like to be hurt and they don't go on in life hurting other people. They go on in their life trying to make other people happy, trying to do things for other people. So you, it's not your fault if you grow up in an abusive home and it's not your fault if you have a, a bad beginning, but it becomes your fault when you are an adult and you still continue on abusing others when now you are an abuser to your child. It's cruel and it's perverse and it's not okay. And it, there is no excuse at all for being a cruel, hurtful person. You have children to raise, you have a wife, you have a husband, you have friends, children. It's your responsibility. You know, I always say to my children, and it, it's so true, you can't control how other people treat you, but you can control how you react to it. So yeah, maybe you were abused. Maybe you had a horrible life. That could very well be true, but lots of people have horrible lives and don't grow up to be terrible, abusive people, harming people, driving people to suicide, ruining children's lives. That's just, there's no, there's no excuse in the world for that. So sorry about that little tangent, but that's something I hear all the time. Oh, I've had a hard life. Well, everybody has had something happen to them. And maybe some people, maybe you have had a worse life than other people, but that doesn't mean that now when you have power, you can exert your cruelty on somebody else. So now I'm going to go into another one, which is, I'm sorry you feel that way. This is something my husband says all the time. Either I'm sorry you feel that way or I'm sorry. Not sorry that he's sorry he did something, just, oh, I'm sorry that happened to you. You know, and so that's what the narcissist will say. But what they really mean by that is, of course, I'm not sorry, but I want you to think I'm a lot better than I am. Actually, I love how slyly I phrase that sentence. I've said I'm sorry, and maybe I am sorry you feel that way because your feelings are affecting me and everything should be about me. But I won't do anything more than say sorry. No matter what happens, I, have a, I had a beloved pet die. My husband's response is, sorry. Anyway, so what's for dinner? You know, that type of thing. You know, it's not, I'm so sorry. How can I make this better? Or I want you to feel good. Or, you know, this terrible thing happened to you. Uh, what can I do? It's never about that. It's always, you know, oh, sorry. But now back to me. And another one kind of related to that is you're overreacting. The truth that they aren't going to say is, of course you aren't overreacting. I did something atrocious, but you aren't allowed to react negatively to anything I do. Um, if you do, I'll just say it's your fault and that's it. You are overreacting. You are causing a scene. You have a problem and nothing that you do can affect me negatively without you hearing about it. That's how narcissism is. Another one, and my husband has said this to me a couple of times and I've heard from other people that this is a standard reply that a narcissist will say, you're crazy. The truth is not what they're going to tell you, which is, I enjoy creating chaos and destruction, and I enjoy seeing your reaction to it. It makes me feel powerful. I enjoy the feeling of superiority that I feel watching you react appropriately to my inappropriate reactions. Saying you are crazy is one way I can get the type of response I crave. And... Last but not least, and of course there are many more. These are just 10 that I thought of. The last one is actually not a response or not something that they'll say. It's something they won't say. And that is the silent treatment. During the silent treatment, this is what the narcissist is thinking. I know I'm hurting you, but I don't care. I like hurting you because I'm weak. And when I hurt you, I feel strong. It really is like taking candy from a baby they will just snatch you away. You're nothing. They will take your life and just throw it away. You are insignificant. You are nothing. You are not even worth a reply. They will just shut you down. 
but they know exactly what they're doing when they shut you down and they love it. They, it's like, it's like a drug to them, the way that they can feel superior to you when they can crush you. It's how narcissists feel good about themselves. You are just a means to an end. They need to feel good about themselves. They need to feel that they are amazing and wonderful. And if they have the power to affect another human being, well, that is just awesome. And that is something that they will just live on if they can. So these are just 10 things that a narcissist might say. But just always remember that the narcissist is not a good person. They are doing these things on purpose. I used to believe for a long time that my husband was a victim of himself, you know, that he didn't realize he was hurting me or he didn't realize what he was doing. I now know that he always knew exactly what he was doing. So please understand that because I have been married for 18 years and it is my mission now to save other people from going through the same hell that I have been and am currently going through. The narcissist is not innocent. They know. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love you to subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to put out three videos a week. I appreciate all of you and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bless you.